Hello and welcome to the Trudy Haynes Show. I'm Trudy. Today, Bill Anderson explains the whammy that put the hold on the voter ID law. A community doctor resigns but was fortunate to find someone he's confident in passing the baton to. Young, talented, and beautiful. I'm describing the director and the star of the new movie, Middle of Nowhere, and you're going to meet them today. But first, let's go around town. All of you couldn't make the dedication ceremonies recently held at the Constitution Center for the greatest, Muhammad Ali. But for those of you who couldn't, our intern gem, Cassandra Kane, captures the moment. Grammy Award winner Roberta Flack was in town recently. Did you see her? The soulful songstress was one of many that came out to honor the greatest, Muhammad Ali. He received the 2012 Liberty Medal Award earlier this month. Recipients of this prestigious award are honored for their dedication to protecting the rights and liberties of others. Ali's wife, Lonnie, spoke on his behalf. For that, he is eternally grateful, but aware that these freedoms should never be taken for granted by anyone. Others took to the podium to speak of how Ali's courage inspired them, such as actor Terrence Howard, Philadelphia's Mayor Nutter. Unlike athletes and other public icons who have had their moment in the sun and then slipped quietly away, Muhammad Ali continues to this day to inspire young people throughout the world. I would say my great inspiration would be Muhammad Ali and um, Floyd Mayweather uh, because I believe we have the same mentality of we do what we have to do to win. And Muhammad Ali's daughter, Layla Ali, was by his side the whole ceremony. Layla and Lonnie Ali also attended a press conference earlier that day alongside Olympic gold medalists Susan Francia and Clarissa Shields. The press conference addressed how sports can really impact society and motivate change. We caught up with Layla Ali after the press conference. Here's what she had to say. It's a really exciting day for your family. How's it feel to have your father honored in this way? You know, it's an honor to be here to present my dad with the Liberty Award. You know, I've always put him on the highest pedestal, not just of athletes, but of men. And, um, you know, I think it's wonderful that he's being recognized because I think he is such a part of history, such a big part of history for this country, and it's inspired so many, and uh, there'll never be another Muhammad Ali. I'm the greatest fighter of all times, all times. There you have it. Muhammad Ali is a man of many achievements, still the champ and still the greatest. From the Constitution Center, I'm Cassandra Kane for the Trudy Haynes Show. Bounce TV has finally launched its headquarters in its new home in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And we were there, and so was anyone associated with the new network. Of course, the Trudy Haynes Show was well represented by members of the team, like our editor, Bill Morgan, and some of our video staff, including Cassandra Gray. And of course, our intern gems, Kiana, Tori, Ebony, and Cassandra. Posing with actor TV host Mike Nice is Cynthia DeLeonardo, the hostess with the mostest for putting all of the local programming together on Bounce, which you see from 7 to 8 p.m. Mondays through Fridays. Also present, of course, Vonda, looking fit and fabulous, and plans to have you looking the same if you stick with her weekly series on the Trudy Haynes Show. And remember, folks, it's all free, so tune in. Her friend Shemaya Bay is already receiving hits for his astrology reports on our show. Listen in for his star reports on your future. And Kathy Lee is the lady who gives you all the inside story of our gone but not forgotten heroes of past and present on hidden footprints. And of course, yours truly was there. And I want to report that this was a first class event. After months of haggling, lawsuits, and challenges, we now have a resolution to Pennsylvania's controversial voter identification law. Hello, everyone. I'm Bill Anderson, once again reporting for the Trudy Haynes Show. 
So as I just mentioned, after several legal challenges, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court sending it back to a lower court, we now have a resolution in the controversial voter identification law. It has now been wiped off the books, at least for now. Judge Simpson put an injunction in place so this controversial law will not be in effect in the upcoming November election here in Pennsylvania. It remains to be seen whether or not the law will be put back into place going forward, but we do know that it is not going to be in effect, at least for now, in the upcoming election. You will not need photo identification unless it's the first time that you voted in the upcoming election. So that's a victory for many who are out there challenging it. We talked to one of those people, Congressman Bob Brady, asked him what he thought about the initial law and why he thought that it was a problem that needed to be wiped away. I think it's wrong. I think it's a hardship. It's wrong for to have seniors and or even anyone for that matter have to get up and spend five and six hours, five and six hours to get a, a photo ID. I think it's a poll tax because the photo ID is free. But how about the gas? How about the, the, the car fare? How about the inconvenience? I think it's wrong to do that to the citizens. The voter ID legislation was also gaining a great deal of national attention because Pennsylvania was being closely watched. The national president of the NAACP, Ben Jealous, spent some time with us explaining why it was such an important issue and why the nation was watching Pennsylvania so closely. We heard uh, Pennsylvania GOP majority leader Terza say quite clearly that this law was intended to ensure that Romney would win. Uh, and that's because it's intended to make life very difficult and make voting extremely difficult for large numbers of black folks, brown folks, students, and senior citizens. And virtually all of those are populations that Obama's surge voters came from in 2008. The other major issue that we, of course, have been following very closely is the upcoming November presidential election here in Pennsylvania. Debate season has begun, and after the first debate, there were many people who were saying that President Obama did not have his best moment. Opinions varied, but many believe that Governor Mitt Romney may have stepped up and won the initial debate. We talked to a couple local elected officials to get their feelings about the debate, starting with the majority leader in city council, Councilman Curtis Jones Jr. Here was his take on the first presidential debate. I think you can see the clear differences between Romney's vision for America and Barack Obama's. And I, I think as you looked at the meter uh, of the undecideds, which was on the bottom screen, you can see what resonated with women versus men, what resonated with uh, people uh, by way of issues. I was surprised by some uh, that education didn't score among men or women, uh, that uh, Medicare, Social Security did. Um, and, and so so as we see this issue-based debate crystallize, you can see why, not just on personalities, why you may not uh, appreciate one candidate over the other, but w on the substance, why you should vote for one over the other. But not everyone was as encouraged and enthusiastic as Councilman Jones. Councilman Jim Kenney, also a President Obama supporter, just didn't feel that President Obama was strong enough in the initial debate. Here's what Councilman Kenny had to say. I think it's traditionally the challenger against an incumbent president does well in the first debate. Um, my, my, I love Barack Obama, but my biggest problem with him always is be the president, man. Kick some butt. Take somebody by the collar. I mean, he just seems like he just looked down at his notes and he took what Romney was throwing at him. And it's the same thing in his dealings with Congress. I mean, he's got to he's got to kick ass and take no prisoners sometimes. And sometimes he doesn't do it. I love him. I think he's in, I think he's brilliant. I think he's going to get reelected. But he just needs to, to, to man up sometimes and be a little tough. So if we're talking about voter identification laws and presidential debates, it must be that time of year. It's going to be an exciting period to watch The Trudy Haynes Show. We'll keep you informed over everything that's taking place, the upcoming debates, and anything else that's relevant to your life, because that's what we do on The Trudy Haynes Show. Once again, the controversial voter identification legislation has been struck down. So for now, you will not need photo identification on this upcoming Election Day in November. I'm Bill Anderson, radio host for 900 AM WURD, reporting for The Trudy Haynes Show. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and have a great night. Dr. Stubbs, it's a little unusual to do an interview with somebody who's leaving instead of coming in 
to a neighborhood, and you've been here for a long time, so as a legacy, what would you advise your patients to do or for us to do in taking care of ourselves? I'll advise my patients to basically continue the course we started. If they're taking medication, continue taking the medication. Uh, if they're getting follow-up treatment, continue getting the follow-up treatment with uh, uh, Dr. Uda, who's uh, going to be seeing my patients when I leave. Uh, basically, that's it. Well, now you're leaving a lot of years behind in this community, which is sort of rare for a doctor to be in one place all that length of time. How long have you been here, and what have you been doing? I've been in this office uh, for since 1980, mm -hmm. uh, basically seeing patients. Uh, I had two offices at one time, one here, one out in North Philadelphia. Uh, I do my surgery at the Will Surgical Center in uh, Plymouth Meeting. Uh, I used to be on staff at Chestnut Hill, uh, Germantown, Einstein, Graduate Hospital, Newman Hospital, and uh, I, I think that's about it. Well, you have quite a record. What do you think is the most important thing that you are leaving behind uh, in all these years that you've been doing ophthalmology? Yes. Uh, I think one of the most important things I've left behind is the uh, amount of patients that I've touched uh, and the amount of patients who've uh, uh, done better uh, for seeing me. Mm -hmm. The amount of surgeries that I've done on patients to correct their vision and the amount of, of uh, patients I've treated for glaucoma uh, who still have their vision. Mm -hmm. You're going to be missed. And I'm what gonna, I'm going to miss a lot of the patients that I've uh, been treating. I've, I've, you know, I've seen some of them uh, and informed them I'm leaving, and it wasn't easy because some of them, uh, some of them began to shed tears. Yeah. You know, and uh, some of these people I've been with, you know, they're like almost like family, and uh, I'm going to miss them. Although Dr. Stubbs is leaving, his patients are fortunate. His practice will be taken over at this new location by ophthalmologist Cordelia Udall, who seems quite ready for the challenge. Now, you're going to be taking over some of the patients, or hopefully all of the patients from Dr. Stubbs. What are your qualifications? What do you bring to the table? Well, a lot. Uh, uh, well, my name is Cordelia Udall. Um, uh, Dr. Stops, uh, you know, partner. Dr. Stops, as you know, is retiring, so we uh, we have all his patients' charts. Uh, his practice have merged with ours. Uh, we have an office in Willow Grove, and we opened the this one in uh, Shelton Ham and Wadsworth. Uh, you know, beginning of this year to be able to accommodate all Dr. Stubbs patients. And we equipped this building with the latest medical equipment mm -hmm. and diagnostic, uh, you know, machine. And we have a lot to offer. I know we cannot, uh, you know, I cannot, uh, you know, be Dr. Stubbs, but I can guarantee all his patients that I will give them the very best um, well, you have a, a, a background of your own that's very yeah. stunning. Tell us about it. Um, I, um, you come from Nigeria? Yes, I was born in Nigeria. I came, I came to U.S. in my late teens. Mm -hmm. I did uh, pharmacy at Temple University in Philadelphia, graduated magna cum laude in 1981, and finished, uh, did... Um, work as pharmacist for 10 years. And after 10 years, I went back to school, this time uh, at University of Pennsylvania Medical School in Philadelphia. Uh, finished and did my, uh, you know, my uh, you know, ophthalmology residency at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. And after that, I came back here again. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I've been in private practice in Willow Grove since uh, since 2000. And now you're here. And now we're here. We didn't close the office in Willow Grove. We, we now have two offices. Okay. Uh, this is a bigger one. Uh, we made it very special and special. 
Uh, so Dr. Stop's patient will not miss Dr. Stop that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, being an ophthalmologist today, is there are there many changes in, say, for instance, when Dr. Stubbs started and what you're doing today? Oh, yes. A whole lot of uh, diagnostic equipment, uh, in, uh, in medications, uh, you know, treatment, you know, modalities. They've all really changed a lot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I, uh, my... My scope of practice is, is a little broader mm -hmm. than that of Dr. Stubbs. And so I do have all those necessary uh, uh, you know, diagnostic equipments mm -hmm. and um, you know, treatment you know, modalities to offer them, starting from glaucoma, you know, diabetic eye disease, cataract, uh, laser vision correction. Uh, I am a comprehensive ophthalmologist. Which means? Which means uh, I, I treat all of the eye ailments. Uh, when it comes to certain surgeries that uh, I don't feel comfortable doing, I refer it to the uh, subspecialists, mm -hmm. you know, within my area. Uh, okay. A farewell party for Stubbs is planning at Udall's office on October the 24th from 4 to 8 p.m. Hey, Philadelphia. I'm here, Vonda Klein, with Fit and Fabulous. We're going to be bringing you information on how to get fit, how to look great, get in shape. Let's work that body out. We're here in Philadelphia with the Trudy Haynes Show, and we're going to have fabulous guests to come on and help you get in shape. So let's go. Let's get those bodies revved up for September's here, a new season. Come on out and join us. Fit and fabulous in Philadelphia. If you're like me, when you hear about going to the dentist, you kind of hesitate. But if you hear the words root canal, you run away. <laughs> but you shouldn't because a dentist can be a very good friend and a root canal, getting one, can save your life. Is that right? You're absolutely right. A uh, root canal is a, uh, usually a situation where the nerve and the blood supply from the tooth actually die. Uh, and either uh, you will get a root canal uh, or you will have an extraction. Uh, and most dentists today, we, we don't prefer that people lose teeth because even um, after a successful root canal, people will uh, maintain and hold the tooth for another 20, 25 years. If you let it go, though, it, it, you can get infection? Yes. Um, what happens is when the nerve uh, dies, the tooth actually becomes uh, infected. It becomes almost like a dead mouse uh, that's caught in your house. When you have a dead mouse in your house, it actually starts to smell. The root canal actually festers or the, the dead dying nerve starts to fester and causes an infection underneath of the tooth. So allowing it to stay there will uh, allow usually a swelling or an, an infection to fester. Why are we so afraid of that? Um do we let it go too long? Is that what it is? Yeah, what, what it is is uh, a lot of times the, um, the a small cavity, um, it, it festers for a while and it becomes larger and larger. As it continues, it encroaches upon the nerve or it gets closer to the nerve and the blood supply. The nerve and the blood supply are trying to actually move away from the um, infected or the affected area. And as they uh, attempt to move away, they sometimes die. And so you wind up getting a cavity that causes um, uh, eventually the nerve to die and then uh, the tooth to either need to be root canaled or extracted. And so, um, you know, getting it early or treating it early is the best thing. So we suggest that patients come in early and have their cavities filled before they get to the point where they actually need to have a root canal or an extraction. What about this root canal? Why are we so hesitant about it, and how can we avoid it? Okay. Um, I think people are hesitant about the root canals because of the, um, the situations in the past. With uh, newer technology, people can actually get a root canal uh, painlessly. Uh, a lot of times, uh, painlessly, painlessly. <laughs> and uh, a lot of times in one visit also. So uh, catching catching the infection early or catching the um, 
the, the dying nerve early is sometimes the best thing to do because allowing it um, to become worse, it, it usually requires um, more time from the dentist, and it also requires patients suffering more because usually once they have pain, it takes them a while to overcome the pain threshold. So um, having a root canal when it actually hurts is probably uh, worse than having uh, a root canal before it gets to that point. Well, I sort of want to advise our audience that if you're lucky like I am, you get a dentist with a gentle touch, and Champion has just that, Champion Dentistry. Call regarding inmate number P48057, North Hall Level D, Derek J. Murray. My registrant number is 051954. Oh, can you even believe it? I can't believe it. Ten months early. It's good news. It's great news. Baby, you got everything going for you. You're coming home. <laughs> we are somewhere in between, in a middle place. your name. My name is Ava DuVernay. She's got the tough name. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's Imayati Cornaldi. Okay. What does it all mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, my dad's from Panama, and there was a princess in Panama named Yamati, and that's what he wanted to name me. But my mom wanted to name me Brandy, and so he took her mother's name, which was Emma, and made Imayati. And where are you from? <laughs> um, I know, right? <laughs> my 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 dad's from Panama. My mom's from Ohio. I'm born in Kentucky, but an army brat. Lived all over the place, and so I called Jersey home. Um, but spent my last three years of high school in Kansas. I lived in Germany and Ohio. Well, where are you living now? I live in California now. <laughs> Come on in a little. It's quite place. complicated with oh, her. Now. Okay, we got the pretty young lady, and now another beautiful lady. Thank you. And you're from where? I'm from Compton, California. Okay, mm -hmm. you've been living there all the time. Living there all my life. Born and raised in Compton, Long Beach, Linwood area. Went to UCLA, opened my business there, and making films there. Films is why we're here, to talk about this wonderful film that you've made, and I haven't had a chance to see it yet. Tell me a little about it. Well, you know what? It's a love story. It's a love story with um, with beautiful brown people, and uh, and I think that's something that we want to see more of. Um, it really looks at uh, two people who are separated, uh, in this case through incarceration. Uh, it's a married couple. Uh, the woman, played by Emmy Yatsi, is really kind of torn apart and loses her identity when her husband um, is locked up. And this is something that w millions and millions of millions of our women are facing. And so um, we really take the time to explore what her world is like when this happens and how she learns to kind of find herself again. Now, being as young as you are and not having these problems in your background, how did you adjust to that role? Mm -hmm. um, it's true. I mean, I've never experienced having um, you know, a, a significant other incarcerated or locked up, but um, I have experienced loss, you know, I have experienced um, a feeling of loss in a relationship, and so I really just pulled from, from those feelings that, that I had uh, from those experiences. Yeah. Now, you didn't know each other before, right? No. So how did you connect? Through an audition, the audition process, our casting director, Aisha Coley, a beautiful black woman, a casting director who cast Love and Basketball and Secret Life of Bees and Aquila and the Bee, was working with me as an independent filmmaker. I didn't have a lot of money or notice, but she took pity on me and was doing my <laughs> casting and uh, was bringing me um, you know, various actresses to, to look at. Um, she brought me tape on Emmy Yatsi, and the minute I saw her, I was very, very interested in so. this you know, amazing talent. Yeah. What have you done before? Is this your interest? Oh, absolutely. This is this is my first lead in in a feature film. You know, and it it's. I'm very much so grateful that this is the kind of film that I get to make my my debut in. You know, it's something that I feel like my family can be proud of. You know, my nieces and nephews can be proud of. Um, and so I want to continue on that same plane with what I do next. Mm -hmm. uh, but prior to this, I did a little bit of everything: um, TV, film, theater, commercials, pretty much all of it. And I love all of it because at the end of the day, it's all acting, and that's what I love. Two strong women, two very talented women, uh, which is not often noticed or it happens. How did it come about? 
You know, I mean, I think it, it's something similar to just knowing your background and your story, and and you, you being the first woman to do what you did in in in, in a major city. Um, it happens. It happens through applying your passion and equaling that with your talent and your drive. And so often, you know, we're not given the chance. We have to make our own chance and make our own space. And I think that's what both of us have tried to do, and what we're encouraging other people to do. Encouraging young people looking at you today say, I, I want to be as pretty and as beautiful and as talented as you. How do you encourage them? I encourage them by, the, and these are the same things that I say to my, my nieces especially and my nephews. Be the best version of you that you can be. You know, be true to yourself. Um, be believe, you know, have some sort of foundation, you know, that you can be grounded in. And I believe that from there you can do anything. You know, anything is possible once you truly believe in yourself, believe in the possibility of what can be done. Um, and allow no one to tell you that you can't. There are no limits to anything. Um, I believe for me, making the move, you know, packing up my car and leaving from Burlington, New Jersey and driving across the country to California, the odds were against me. There's so many other, you know, talented black women who were already there. Um, but I believed and, and I trusted in, in um, what had been placed within me. And so if you do that, I believe that anything is possible. How is he? He's fine. Oh, could you tell Mr. Fine I need money? I'm trying. We're trying. Let's go out on real care, Pop. I want to see Uncle Derek on the big ship. I don't want you to stop from me, baby. You are me. Remember. Perfect man. Hey. How's your day doing? From the fire. He's going through a tough time. Oh, he's going through a tough time? I see. I that was you. I'm oh, Brian. Keep those brown eyes wide open for I don't know what's going to happen next. I'm going to try to be what's happening next. Please don't patronize me, sir. It's not supposed to be like this. He's doing good time. There's a chance. You can't see two feet in front of you. Mr. you. We got something, don't we? Next case, Derek Murray. The past has disappeared. In the future, it doesn't exist. Until we get there. We've enjoyed having you, and I hope you come back every Tuesday and Thursday. But remember, there's a crack in everything, but that's how the light gets in. Have a good one. Crazy.